item 6C, case number REZ 2018-07, the Branham Project, 2480 Copeland Road. The request is R1 to R10. It has water and sewer, and this involves 18.04 acres. Mr. Davenport. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know most of the discussion on the cases yesterday involved this particular one. I do have uh, three brief updates since the work session yesterday. Number one, just uh, two phone calls received from not adjacent neighbors, but neighbors in the area expressing some concerns about the case, as well as um, a new petition turned in yesterday morning um, that we prepared a new map for that you'll find at your desk tonight, indicating two additional signatures with concerns about the case. Those are the only three updates we have. You have the various recommendations in front of you with those proposed conditions. We're here to answer any questions you may have, but we do expect to uh, hear those speaking both in favor and against the case tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Davenport. Any questions for Mr. Davenport? Okay. Hearing none, we'll open it up to the, the public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Rick Guest. I live at 3001 Lester Road. Uh, all the properties surrounding this particular property are all larger tracts of land. Families that have been there for many years. It's just going to be too dense. Just, it's just too, too dense for the area. I mean, the, the traffic during peak times, during school time, I mean, with the two entrances that he's talking about adding for the subdivision, you got Lester Road right there, and then on the east side of Lester Road, you got four more entrances to the daycare. That's a lot for one area. Uh, Copeland Road just can't handle this. Any questions for Mr. Guest? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Guest. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Wanna Heath, uh, 2971 Lester Road. Uh, we've met before. It's good to see you all. Uh, you guys pass this, you're going to have to put some money in. you got to put a turning lane in there, almost all the way down Copeland. you got to add one, two, or three red lights. you got to add crosswalks. This is going to cost the county some money. In the meantime, it is way too congested. Copeland Road is congested, and uh, we avoid that area during school. Uh, all of us know, do not, during what school's coming in and out, avoid the area. Uh, the other concern I have is the uh, the traffic with the uh, the wildlife. Um, with everybody out there, we've got a total of eight ponds between the people that's here tonight uh, with the uh, saps and the guests. That's eight ponds. This, this is a retreat for... The wildlife and we don't allow no hunting nobody hunts on this on these properties and uh the the deer and such have learned that this is a safe haven with the amount of houses we're talking about putting on this said property uh minimum two cars per house the the traffic is just going to escalate like you would not believe the county will have to spend money to accommodate Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you. Thank you. We take one more speaker. Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Roger Boyd, 2274 Copeland Road. And uh, it's true what was just said. People avoid Copeland Road. However, if you, because of the traffic, if you live on Copeland Road, as I do, we haven't got any choice. It takes me minutes to get out of my driveway every morning. I'm stopped uh, waiting in, in line. It's a two-lane road. We have uh, the school on there with buses going down every morning, and it is at its capacity. Copeland Road is definitely at its capacity. It can't handle any more traffic. Uh, 
uh, it's a safety issue. It's a safety issue with the, with the school. I know that the school plans to build on the property directly across from this proposed uh, project. And uh, I mean, having uh, entrance going directly into that school, it just, it just isn't practical. And uh, I think everyone else has said it there. We have the school, we have uh, the fire station on there, and we have all of the families that lived on there, have lived there for years, for many years. We know each other. It's a real good community. We watch after each other. And uh, we're very concerned about this project. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Bowen? Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, is there anyone else or anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Bill Kent. I'm with Innovate Engineering, 2214 North Patterson Street. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Branham asking for your consideration to rezone this property to R10. I know there's been a lot of discussion about uh, traffic and traffic concerns. Um, I don't know how much detail you went into yesterday at the work session. However, uh, last year I did a traffic study uh, for this property, um, considering half-acre lots at the time. And what we did, we counted traffic, we counted cars on Copeland Road during the, the peak times. Obviously the school is the uh, major generator of traffic out there. And what we found in that study is that during the morning peak hour, we study things during peak hours, uh, during the peak hour only 20% of the available capacity of Copeland Road was used. I have no doubt there are times that around the school that uh, traffic can get kind of gummed up there if, if the, the teachers and all aren't moving the, the traffic through in an in a orderly manner, no doubt. But from a pure traffic standpoint, you have over 80% of the available capacity of that road available, okay? So basically the study found there was no significant impact from this development onto Copeland Road. Now looking at an R10 development where we have more lots available, we still have an insignificant impact to the road. Um, when you look at a single family residential doing a study, um, you generate one trip per residential lot. Now we all recognize that homes have two, three cars, but what that study has taken into account is that not everybody leaves during the same 15 minute or hour long thing. Some people leave early in the morning, some people leave after the school's let out, but on average, each lot will generate one trip. Of those trips, 90% in the morning are outgoing and it's the reverse in the afternoon. So based on this development of approximately 40 lots, 90% uh, of those, 36 cars will be coming out during the peak hour. Um, now of those, you know, not all are going to turn left and, and get gummed up into the school traffic there. Um, I've not spoken to the school board about the situation, about the, the, the traffic, but I suspect that this is no different than in any other school area that we have around the county. Um, so just to kind of wrap things up, I want to highlight a couple things related to this development. If you had seen the, uh, if you've seen the concept plan, Mr. Branham is uh, willing to go ahead and donate 10 feet of property along Lester Road for the future inevitable paving of that road. That way you, you get the right of way and you don't have to deal with multiple property owners. He's also go, going above and beyond what would be required in that he's going to require um, a buffer um, along the south and west property line of a six foot opaque fence and vegetation. He doesn't have to do that, but just for screening and, and privacy issues, he's willing to do that. And then in the uh, letter of intent, just to hit some highlights, uh, of why R10 zoning is an, an acceptable use of this property. Uh, the primary one is the property is depicted as a suburban area on the Lowndes County Future Development Map. Um, it was intended that this property would be developed residentially. There's adequate water and sewer on Copeland Road and on Lester Road to serve these lots. Um, there is existing R10 um, development in 
relative uh, uh, proximity to this to this lot. Um, won't go into great detail about that, um, but the point is that this is not spot zoning here. And uh, uh, with the property across Copeland Road being zoned OI for uh, the school board, this is a very compatible use um, of the property. So on, with that, I, I'd ask you to accept the uh, staff and planning commission recommendation to approve this with the conditions that were put on, which Mr. Branham has no, no problem with those conditions. Be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Kent? Thank you, Mr. Kent. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public participation portion of the meeting and turn it over to the commissioners for your consideration. Motion to approve the request with the four conditions plus the condition of no manufactured homes or mobile homes plus the condition no two family or duplex residences and minimum lot size to be one third acre instead of one fourth acre. I'm sorry, that lot size? One-third acre. One-third acre. 14,520 square feet. <clears throat> okay. We have a motion uh, to approve the request with the four previous um, conditions and to add the condition of no two-family housing duplexes no manufactured housing, and one-third acre minimum lot size. Which is R10. Okay. Which is still R10. Yes. Okay. We have that as a motion. Do we have a second? Ma'am? No second. Okay. Miss Evans is seconded. Okay. Call the vote. We'll do it by a show of hands. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? Two to two. And Mr. Chairman, as we previously uh, presented the last two or three times this came, came before, uh, I'm recusing myself for I am heir to a property uh, in the said area. Okay. Well, I'll accept that um, due to what that's, you recused yourself the last time, and that was accepted as well. Okay, the vote is two to two. That leads it to the chairman. Um, I will vote in support of the motion. Um, so that makes it then three to two in favor of the motion. Motion carries. We'll move on now.